Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here. My name of course is Mr. Milk Lever. Let's continue playing as our Austrian campaign in this new, almost radically different world in 1936 as Austria. So, <coughs> excuse me. And if you want to know, I just had my coffee, so cheers to you. Keep drinking if you are, but I am currently done with mine at the moment. So, a lot has changed since 1919 when we won the Weltkrieg with German support. And us coming out of the war seemingly much stronger, but that is not so much the case. For you see, we are to a degree a shell of our former past. Now, there's been a, a lot of things that have gone on since 1919. First of all, let's talk about in the north, Bohemia. Bohemia has been released, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the the tension, the anger that was filled, that was just all in Austria-Hungary. And ultimately, as a kind of general blanket statement, instead of completely losing everybody in the Empire, we decided, you know what, we'll have constituents. We will be a very decentralized federation of states, including Bohemia, Galicia, Lodomeria, uh, Hungary is going to be a problem that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, and Illyria, as well as Serbia. <coughs> With that in mind, we do have the Kingdom of the Ukraine, with us, of course. And they are nice and thick. Nice and thick. But we also, I personally took Krim, or Sevastopol, just because we need some sort of authority in the Black Sea. So with that in mind, Bohemia was angry at us, the Czechs were angry, uh, the Germans in the Sudetenland were also very angry at us as well. Not really at us, but the Bohemians, they wanted to know how to rule themselves, and this is the best we could do. Same thing with the U the few Ukrainians here, as well as the Poles, I guess a few Romanians and Bukovina, which we used to give to Romania, but there's been some issues with Romania and Bulgaria and the Hungarians involved. But before we talk about that, let's talk about this thing called Illyria. Now, at the end of 1919, or I guess at the end of the Valkyrie, we did successfully puppet Serbia. Since then, though, there's been so much tension between all of the rest of the Balkans that we literally annex into our own country, including Bosnia, Bosnians, Croatians, Montenegrins, and including a small minority of Serbians within our country. Now, there was a revolt in Serbia against our rule, of course. I mean, that's... Serbians love revolting unless they're independent, and even then they like to revolt. So, it was founded that the only way to really appease the situation and keep our control on, over our portions of the Balkans... We decided, you know what, Serbia, in the end, you can be independent, but the rest of the Balkans will be under our rule, at least in this portion. Obviously, Albania wasn't in the Valkyrie, so they're not part of ours. Let's talk about Bulgaria next. So, with an independent Serbia, and with both Romania and Bulgaria in the Veltkrieg, with us together, surprisingly, so Bulgaria was given more centralized control over the southern Balkans, so that's why they have... Macedonia, parts of Greece, which which was at war with us for a while, Thrace, and Sofia. Oh, I guess it's Piotr as well. So they were given much more control, but we don't want to give them too much control. So they took a big portion of Serbian land, kind of as a gift, and to make sure the Serbs aren't too strong here. Now, Romania and Serbia, no, Romania and Serbia, no, no. Romania and the Bulgarians did have a lot of conflicts between the interwar years. Uh... Basically, this also involves Hungarians. The Hungarians wanted as much territory as possible, and to save the empire from totally collapsing, because we needed Hungarian support, we made sure that Romania did not get any territory from eastern Hungary. So they could not get, so Romania could not get Transylvania, and, but Bulgaria did want Silestra, but they, Bulgaria did not, also did not get Dobro, Dobrogia. So, this is the best situation we currently have had concerning Europe since the Veltkrieg. Now, that's not everything, but that has proved to be, like I said, the best solution to lower everyone's tension to the point where they're not going to revolt against us and start another world war. That being said, <coughs> Italy. Well, in 1919 and 1920, we had some sort of almost a full-scale Italian civil war. That being said, Italy, southern Italy, also known as Two Sicilies, is a puppet of Germany, and that's how we divided up Italy at the end of the Veltkrieg. So they were kind of isolated by themselves down here. 
I, as Austria, Kaiser, uh, Kaiser Karl I, decided to say, you know what, we have Northern Italy our, under our control, but in 1919 to 1920, there was some sort of revolt going on, and basically, the socialists in Northern Italy decided to take power. Uh, they pushed us all the way back, surprisingly. Well, I didn't really get involved too much with the socialists pushed back the Italian Republicans, or the Liberals, the Democratic, more Democratic Italians, back over this river. I don't remember what, what this river is called. But basically, Milan and Venice, and Venice, Milan and Venice are ours. They were the last vestiges of the Italian, the proposed Italian Federation that we wanted. But, obviously that didn't work out. The socialists were too strong for the weak Italian Republic, thusly causing a lot of tension between here and, of course, tension, technically, between two Sicilies under the Reichs Pact, with the Socialist Republic of Italy and the Italian Republic. And Sardinia, well, just to break up Italy a little bit more, we just let them alone and they joined the Entente. Or the former vestiges of what was the Entente, because the Entente was kicked out of Europe. Their international a type of syndicalism, totalism, left, hard left-wing ideologies, they really don't like us. And, of course, Belgium is a part of Germany, or, I guess, a puppet of Germany, as well as the United Baltic Duchy, which we saw last time, as well as Lithuania, and, surprisingly, White Russia, or Belorussia. Belorussia. Other than that, um, Don Kuban region was here, Alash Autonomy, Turkestan, not much else has happened. The Ottoman Empire is still here, surprisingly, and Greece is a rump state at the moment. But with that in mind, let's get started with trying to figure out what we're going to do in this actual game. So let's do some research first. Uh, I did technically lose all those factories I did built up because, you know, a lot of things happen. You know, we go through recessions, we go through great periods of time of economic benefit, but because of some of the political and economic instability, we have greatly been hurt in terms of factories. Alright, infantry, 1936. Ooh, that is not research. Last one. Um... Superior firepower is always a great thing to do. So our goal, we, let's talk about goals, because we need goals in this game, right? We just we can play and take everyone over, but that's not really cool. Well, actually, that is really cool, but that's not that's not my main goal. My goal at this time, playing as Austria, is to reunite our empire under one central leader and being plural, pluralistic, embracing pluralism like in Victoria 2. I don't know if you ever heard of that game. That's a pretty fun game that I'm really terrible at. So, our goal is to get to a union, no longer in name only, and looking outwards. Deal with Hungary, integrating everyone, and I want to become the United States of Greater Austria. We must reform the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but instead of just Austria and Hungary being the sole rulers, we must have everyone united together. So, let's get started with economic rehabilitation plans. Cool. Hmm. So, something tells me in the future... I have like I have a soothsayer, you know, someone who's watching a crystal ball of some sort, that tells me that we might be in some sort of mini war against people who might not like us in the future, Hungary. So, with that in mind, actually I'm gonna put you, uh, cavalry divisions. Uh, oh, you have you have tanks on there. Nice. Uh, with that in mind, <clears throat> something might happen during our Italian Republic that. People might want to be aware of... Oh, you're going to need another division. The Italians, even though it is an Italian Republic, and it's one of our greatest creations, it is no by means very, very stable. We have all sorts of radical ideologies in Italy that might cause problems. Uh, well, I'm going to call this the Eastern Front. You never know what might happen on the Eastern Front. I need a very good general. Let's see. Ambusher, Skilled Staffer, Alfred Jansa, you're the man for the job. Now you guys will all be under, well, both of you, in case this goes south. Defensive entrenchment. Yeah. Edward von Böhm uh, Molle. Uh, I hate this. The leader experience of the game goes down, but he's got that entrenchment, though. But I think anyone can get that entrenchment. Uh, oh, God. They all suck. Max general size, reinforced rate. Uh, you can... He can learn to be defensive doctor himself. That'll be fine. Uh, let's see, you are over here in the mountains. 
mountainous boys. Julius Ringel. Yeah, that'll be good. We have upgrades already? Eh, not really. And then you, kind of a ragtag team. <coughs> Excuse me. Please rush Materna. Good. Uh, ships just... We, obviously, since 1919, our navy has been downgraded to a degree, just because, you know, the economic factors and just general downgrades and whatnot, you know. But, I really wish there was a way to make this... Actually, there is a way to make this guy a little more strong. But this guy, Miklos Worthy, who was our former admiral in the last episode, he, he's taking some time off, so his skill isn't as good, but I still have faith in our Hungarian admiral here that he can be a great leader. But we still have a lot of dreadnoughts. And obviously, these are the exact same dreadnoughts with just funny different names that we renamed to because of the revolutions that have occurred or, you know, rebellions. We've renamed some of our ships to appease some of our people, so, you know, we still have dreadnoughts from 1919. Really good stuff here. Um, I'm sure we had an early armor cruiser from 1900 that was in the bottom of the sea that we've actually repaired. Don't ask me how we did that, but just, yeah, that happened. Alright, so, uh, like tanks, uh, I really do not have the space for a lot of stuff. We don't have the factories, really, to do very much. But that'll have to do. I'm gonna need guns. I'm gonna be honest, we're gonna need a lot of guns. Let's see, this is 12 width. Uh, I'd rather train this. My goal, if there's a, any sort of, you know, second bell freak or anything like that, I'm gonna try to stay out of that. I really wanna unite my country first. I think that'd be for the best. Uh, they'll make enough. Let's increase you by that. Increase you by that. Anything else? Naval bombers? Eh. Not a high priority. Light tanks, not a high priority either. But. <coughs> excuse me. F interwar fast battleship. Interwar just. Uh, there's really no one we're going to go to war with in terms of naval capacity yet without. I don't want to research or you know, make things that are kind of hurt us. I mean, yeah, we got ships we can do, but we can get better ships. But, anyways. Let's go ahead. We're already training a few soldiers. Uh, is anyone not experienced? Yeah, you're not experienced. You need more soldiers. And you guys. Yeah. They'll definitely need to help us here against those pesky Hungarians that might not like us that much. Alright, let's get started. Uh, the situation of Austria in 1836, despite standing amongst the victors in the Creek, the war revealed divisions of culture, class, and ideology within the empire over ever so clearly, and the inter or the inner and west continued on as the war ended. Kaiser Karl, following the footsteps of assassinated Franz Ferdinand and trying to reform the multinational Austro-Hungarian Empire into something that could survive in the 20th century, launched a series of large-scale reforms. However, his efforts were largely blocked by the nobility of the bastards called the Hungarian people of the empire, leading to his plans of federalization progressing only slowly and only on the cis lithuanian side of the empire. Bunch of bastards. <coughs> Excuse me, what? However, many feel that there's hope for Austria. The last decades were hard on the empire, but the effort has started paying off. cis lithuanian <coughs> Austria, now a federation state, has calmed down, but the same cannot be said for trans lithuania It is, however, unlikely that the Carpathian Basin will continue to remain in Magyar hands, since Hungary's peoples have been gazing upon the liberties across Lethia, wishing to have such autonomy for themselves. Whether a foreign will be able to find a way to Hungary, only the Kaiser knows for sure. Austria et in orbe ultim. I hope that means Austria forever, because I'm not, I'm not, I don't read Latin. But let us continue. So we get 0.45 political power a day. That's not great. Oh no! Is, is, this is a unicorn assassination of President Kerensky. That's never happened. What? How barbaric. Well, Russia being a... Not exactly a rump state at the moment. But not being very pleasant either. Is, is still there. And it can always prove to be problematic. The Russians are always problematic. Especially with such a vast amount of land. Uh, anything else that happened? I mean, Germany has colonies over here. That's pretty much expected. Germany really got a lot of the, out of the war. Totalist charter. <laughs> was this something I was alluding to in the, in the last couple of episodes? Mussolini, this guy, Mussolini, sounds Italian. Valois, sounds Italian. That oh, sounds French. Iberia, sounds European. And other interesting parties. Discuss common ground. Maximism, Sorelianism, and... Okay, Edward VIII, we don't care about British people. Uh, share principles of state supremacy in the social struggle, national identity, 
Totalism is a play on total totalitarian socialism. Eagerly accepted by Mosley, who added it to the manifesto's name. Well, that doesn't sound good. Oh, shoot. Uh, and to account for um, all the land that Germany got in World War One, you know, from you know the Veld Creek, I couldn't exactly divide this up. And I'm just gonna say that the French got this back because you know obviously these states aren't exactly the same. That there was a little bit of a revolt here. There was basically more French, a ton more French people here than actual Germans. And let's just say the Germans were pushed out of this area. I'm going to say that for the lore. All right, I forgot about that. But everything else, I mean, it's a nice, nice line here. Very nice line. Very, very nice. Yeah, there's just there's too much, too many French people here to, for Germany to really control, as well as Germany trying to exert control all over the world, including <laughs> German Africa, Madagascar, Djibouti. Over there, uh, India, the Southeast Asian colonies, uh, uh, yeah, all these c colonies here too. German China, the Germans are so stretched thin that on their home front, they realize if they want to have overseas territories, they they can't take every land from the French, every piece of land. So that's that's my rationale for that happening. All right, so oh, no profits from legation cities. Following the 1926 German intervention in China and the Treaty of Nanjing signed in November of that year, which I pretty much just talked about, foreign trade was left to the richest cities of the coast under the joint control of world powers owing, owning interest in China. The independence of the, this consortium of cities was guaranteed by eight powers. Australasia, me, the best country in the world, Austria, Canada, Germany, Japan, and the French Republic, Russia, and the USA. <clears throat> foreign investments and legation cities themselves flourished not only through foreign trade, but also thanks to smuggling into Allgemeine Ost- Asian Gesellschaft, Ostgesellschaft Asian, German China, and Qing Imperial Territories. However, while we are officially a part of the Legation Cities Council, we have been unable to gain access to the dividends it should entitle us to. What a bunch of bastards. Oh, oh, shit! Black Monday! Black Monday has hit Germany, and it would not be long before its shockwave rippled across Europe. I'm on one speed, guys. Come on, let's slow down here. And given its close, close, Close proximity, Austria is among the first to be affected. The economy is struggling, and troubling times lie ahead. With that in mind, let's make sure we really emphasize military factories. I know I always like civilian factories, but if we can unite the entire empire, then we can get uh, more factories in terms of civilian goods. And electoral gridlock in France, but how, how did that play out? Did syndicalists win? And economic rehabilitation... Uh, Fifth Anglo-Afghani War, no one cares. Well, we got 1.41 political power day. Not bad, since we can't do anything. And I guess the Commune of France decided to go with syndicalism under Trevelyas, Trevelyas, Trevelyas. I'm going to need a lot of weaponry. I need a lot of guns and artillery. Let's just put it like that. For the Hungarians don't exactly like us. Ooh, Austrian elections of 1936. Since federalization begun and the Austrian elections were mostly reduced to the German-speaking part of the empire, two major parties have dominated Austrian politics, the CS and the SDAP. This year's elections, too, are harshly fought. The SDAP and the CS have very different ideas of dealing with the ongoing economic crisis. The SDAP's program focuses on easing, easing the workers' plight, with a focus on unemployment benefits and government intervention. The CS, on the other hand, follow a program of severe austerity measures. It is time for the people to decide. Now, I'm probably going to screw this up. I'm probably going to really screw this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Legislative freedoms. Weekly stability. Probably public support. Oh, I need to endorse one of these two. Ah! Uh, I really should have looked into this a little bit better. Embrace pluralism. Hungary has been reformed. Uh, all kingdoms have been invited. I don't know if I need to go social, uh, social democrat or social conservative. And we have to be at peace regardless. This one, military occupation needs... I'm not really sure. <clears throat> oh, shit. Let's see. Does not own... It doesn't look like... I, I hated this the last time I did this. I wasn't exactly sure. Oh, shit. <sighs> and place... Oh, hold on. Before we do anything. A federation of equals. Okay, so this is important to know. Current ruling party is not social democrat, so we have to go social conservative for this. Social conservative, not social democrats. We had to be social conservative, like we did. I did before. So no S that because S that sounds weird. C S a Christish, Christlich, Christlich social. 
Cool. Yeah, we're social conservatives. Yeah. Yeah, general elections of 1936. Opening schools of... Opening of school and SDAP rally. Even if the economic situation of Austria has been dire for a while, the first years after the victory, when the CS and SDAP still cooperated in their governance, <clears throat> saw widespread reforms in education and welfare. Academies for specialized workers began or begun construction, workers' pensions were introduced, and child labor was once and for all eliminated. Kids, get back to work. Vienna has been regarded as a frontrunner in social circles. Today, a new academy is open in the 9th district of Vienna, which the SDAP sees as a major success of late. Many speeches by various politicians are held, Karl Renner always standing in the background. Renner has been the effective head of the party since he founded the goodwill of the empire during the Belt with a policy of Bergfrieden and cooperation with the crown. Praiseworthy? Uh, let's see, daily social democrat gain. I'd prefer if they didn't claim the successes of a joint government as their own. So regardless, especially with social promises, Adler denounces the SDAP. Adler? Who the hell's Adler? Um. Von Hostel? No. Um. You know? That's okay. Oh, oh, that's so bad. Aftermath of Black Monday. The CS invites Prince Otto to hunt. The CS, a party of the petite bourgeoisie of the Catholic Church and the conservative countryside, usually refrains from holding large public events in Vienna. They instead focus their efforts on smaller private meetings. One such planned meeting will be in the form of a hunt in the Wiener Wald, that's a Vienna forest. Uh, Prince Otto was formally invited to join the hunt. Having enjoyed an aircrust, air, aristocratic education, God, my words are hard to say, the Habsburg heir is already used to such locations. Well, if he wants to, please don't die, please don't die, for the love of God, Carl, please don't die. Is he dead? Oh, yes. Following the hunt, a feast was held, during which the... The a radio interview with several prominent CS figures, but also Prince Otto was recorded. It seems like this was on purpose, as Prince Otto is now being associated with the party, and support amongst our most devoted subjects for the party has increased. Is this what they were hunting for? Ah, oh, that would have been close. Oh, and Afghanistan and the Dominion of India has ended their hostilities. Yeah, that's uninteresting to me. I'm sorry. Oh, and we of course have our brethren here in... German Empire, Jabal, Shemarta, Warnish, I don't care. Oh, that's that's not a lot of stability, Kaiser Veil on the second. And you know, I, I brought this up earlier, but I didn't really expand upon this. Our goal. What is our goal? Well, we have our main goal of trying to reunite the Empire under one one ruler, Kaiser, some sort of Kaiser, whether it be Kaiser Kar or the Otto, but maybe our ultimate goal will be to discern German hegemony across all of Europe. For you see, back in the 1860s, we, the Austrians, lost out in the Brothers' War against Prussia, which obviously formed the German Empire eventually. And we sort of like that. We don't like that. No. We want Austria to be the dominant power, despite us being the smaller Germans. The smaller Germany, basically. If we could take out the German Empire, we might need to... We might be able to do that. That might be a goal. Let me let me know in the comments. And first, something tells me that syndicalism is going to be a major problem in the future. So we might have to deal with them first before we attack the Germans or the Russians, who may become powerful someday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyways, we have elections. The final tally is in. After this hard-fought election campaign, we shall now find out the winner. Isn't this exciting? The Royal Pump, Papal Conclave. <gasps> the uh oh. The hardline Alfredo, he's saucy, Edefonso Schuster, true political power and staunch opponent of syndicalism, which is good, uh, Pope Julius IV, maneuvers in the Carpathians, oh shit, hold on, hold on, it's on one speed, god, let me read, <laughs> so the CS wins the elections, the final count for the elections are in, while it was a close call, the overwhelming majority of the country's head votes have been made, have made the CS come first, so, we have a divided society and we lose political power, god dang it guys. Now we can actually choose something. Can we go back? No. Our economy's not ready for that. So we'll have to do National Austerity Council. Maneuvers in the Carpathians. The Treaty of Bucharest in 1919. Officially ended the Belfry for Romania, but what it cost. Um, Carpathian Mountains were firmly under Hungarian rule, which is really under me. Which is good. Now they're a national populist dictatorship. 
But we you know we did the best we can in trying to keep our empire uh, alive as well. Honestly, they should really like us more. Hmm. But yeah, they they kind of had their own re their elections, let's say, or their own revolt back in 1920, sometime between now and 1919. And they decided to get this guy because, yeah, they didn't like Hungary owning all this territory. I mean, they still have Basarabia, which is fine with me. They had this, but they don't get Celestra. So there's just been a lot of tension between Romania, the Hungarians, which, of course, affects the Austrians, and, of course, Bulgaria, so. Not looking good for anyone in the Balkans. That's why I'm here in Vienna. Chilling out. I don't get down. First International Congress? Eh. Eh, they don't really concern us very much. I'm much more concerned with my own empire at the time being. Christmas promises. Aftermath Black Monday. Oh, Vienna Circle's always good to have. Uh, common recruitment. Common Army Recruitment, or CKUK. Austro-Hungarian ties broken. I just want to make sure that I've got enough divisions for whatever may happen. Who to to join the Great Khanate? Don't care. Are you guys done? Yeah, you guys are done training. Uh, let's go ahead and train as well. Oh, shoot. Do this. Oh, electronic, mechanical, engineering. Probably done. Research by the Vienna Circle that we have as a natural spirit. That I just kind of talked about. Uh, yeah, I need, I need divisions here, guys. Like, can you poop them out any faster? I know I need more guns. I know, I know, I know. Honestly, we don't really need this. We're not even making any of them. Artillery's fine. I'm going to keep this. I just... I need more guns. How many divisions does Austria have? Because someone tells me we might need to <clears throat> break Austrian holds. Now, what will be interesting to see, because uh, these Italians have elections in November. It will be very interesting to see what they do with their elections. I hope, I pray, that they choose the right side of history. And by the right side of history, I'm talking about the right side of us. How are we only making two guns a day, Mukli? Oh, it's because we're probably doing training. Ah, oh, screw it, let's, let's stop training. As much as I like getting more army XP, I just need guns. It's not like these guys... Oh, it's not like these soldiers are, like, weak or anything, so... So, like I was saying, we have influence in the Italian elections. <clears throat> the Italian Republic is in the midst of a general election, and we have considerable influence there. We can give our support and backing to one of the political parties to ensure that the right one takes power in Milan. However, some ministers are concerned that the overt involvement this would require might result in further support for the far-right and anti-Austrian Italian Nationalist Association, which we do. We'll support any of them. It really helps us out. We'll support the People's Party. Uh, let's take a quick look before we make any decision. We need social liberals or social conservatives. The Italian Republicans. Partito Repubblicano Italiano. Uh, that doesn't show me very much. That is... something... So that's the PPI, so that's the Italian Republicans. You know, PRI. The Liberal Democrats. Social, social Liberals. Social Democrats. LDR. No, I don't want to do Liberal Democrats because I'm Social Conservative. The People's Party. PPI. Oh, that's a PPI. Hmm. PRI. What's a PRI? PLD. PLI. ANI. LDR. U.S. P.N.P. Uh, P.R. Well, you know what? We're social conservative. I want social conservative, social conservatism to win. So, yeah, that'll hurt our political power. But we'll see what happens. For the love of God, please don't turn national populist. Please, please, please. Greece sees Austrian assets thanks to the rippling effects of Black Monday. Austrian investors were held, who held majority shares in Greek factories and mines, have been closing those businesses down. In some cases, because they're unprofitable, but in other cases, because investors have gone bankrupt. <coughs> the Greek government has responded by seizing, by seizing the companies despite the Treaty of Salonika, Salonika, signed after the war, stipulating that our investors have unfettered access to the economy. Many in the government are suggesting we respond harshly and not only apply sanctions, but pull all investment out of Greece altogether. Others say the country is only trying to stay afloat. Black money has hit us hard, after all. Sanctions? Express our outrage. Leave them be. We're all trying to cope. Hmm. Yeah, they kind of like us a little bit. Some ideology, of course. Uh, they don't really like our nationalized best. We don't like... Them. 
You know what? I've never done sink apply sanctions and pull all businesses out at once. But they do kind of like us. We might get them to join us in the future. Just apply sanctions then. No, they're gonna like they're gonna hate us anyway, so screw that. Let's put all businesses out anyways. Yeah, they're gonna hate us anyway, so I don't really even care. If anything, I'll support Bulgaria since everyone else is a bunch of bastards with our Alright, so we can compromise the SDAP. Ooh, remove socialist promises, which does lower our daily political power and give more daily social democrat support. Build the coffers. Yeah, let's do this one first. And is there anything else I can do? Oh, well, I'm gonna do one of these. What is this? No daily political power gain. Uh, I'm probably gonna do that because it's only 50. Let's do that. So, uh, social democrat. There's no social conservative, but he's not. It doesn't give me anything else. That's okay. That's okay. We we don't mind having social democrats in the cabinet because it gives us an opinion. You want to keep your not enemies but opponents close. You know, you don't want your friends too close because you already had their opinions. You know, so. You know, you don't want too much of the same opinion, you want to understand other people. And we're going to finish this episode by getting next step in superior firepower and uh, concentrated industry. Oh, this gives us the same, pretty much the same thing. I'll do concentrated industry, and we're going to end it there, guys. I know I'm talking very, very fast, but that's what we've got for today. I've shown you how the world has worked, what has happened since the end of the Valkyrie, and where we are going in the future, hopefully. God, I hope they tell me to make the right decision. Anyways, guys, please leave a like if you liked our new next episode. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you tomorrow as we hopefully won't go to war with anyone and definitely not have to put down any sort of Hungarian rebellion. Thank you very much for watching.